Hi and uh, welcome back again. I'm doing another review of this uh, Ferex. Uh, I'm calling myself Anything Garage because I'm going to be putting quite a few um, videos on YouTube of various things. Uh, the first one which I've already done but I'm going to do again was this Ferex from Aldi um, Bandsaw. But I'm going to be doing review of building this garage. Uh, if anybody's interested, probably riding the bike, driving the Jag, uh, fitting a roller door, uh, building shelves, um, various things, yeah. Built this garage, took me about two and a half weeks altogether. I'm retired, so obviously I've got time through the day. Managed to scrounge a UPVC door and a UPVC window from somebody who were throwing them out so that didn't cost me anything the garage is made from insulated panels steel both sides galvanized plastic coated four inch thick polystyrene lined massive thermal value and you probably know if you're in the trade that the fridge panels were like what Asda and big stores use for walk-in fridges so anyway back to this uh, I didn't do a right good review so I'm trying again and I've got the GoPro going as well um, and I'll keep switching across but basically this is the Ferex that uh, Aldi are selling at the moment it's the one with the larger 550 watt motor uh, I just thought I'd do a review of I've, I've, I've changed the blade because it was um, uh, a wood fine well not fine it was about 4 TPI this is an 18 TPI um, blade and it's uh, by metal because I mainly want to cut steel so this is a new blade I've just fitted so I've had to readjust everything uh, mainly showing where the back gutter of the teeth are it's supposed to run near the centre but that's as far as I can go because if I go any further I'm going to have the blade off the edge and I don't think that's a good idea so it's all running smooth a little bit noisy down here I don't know if a lot of that's this brush that keeps it clean that's scraping, possibly. Um, anybody that saw the other video will see that this is also two speed. Um, there's two two gear there, sprockets, if you call them sprockets, the two, they're grooved. You just swap the belt across by slackening the motor at the other side. Um, and it's two speed, which is those speeds there meters per minute I connected a bit of the bodge really but this fitting comes with the unit and I've just stuck a vacuum cleaner on it basically just to um, suck out any dust I did mention before that the video cut off before I'd finished now I was raving about these rollers because a lot of the cheaper band saws come with usually they're made out of tough mill is of these pads these are actual roller bearings which are quite good uh, and there's a back one as well uh, can't really see it but it's up there I'll try and show it the roller at the back I don't know no I can't see it but it's there um, pushing on the back of the blade I've set these fairly fine so that it's not ragging the roller or pressing hard on it uh, and I've actually if you can see four thou point one oh millimeter and I can get that in between the blade so it's not too tight it's fine um, other features that I liked about this was it's not too big I mean it's what is it about 800 I bench size um, I'll close the door up there was another reason why I've stripped this down to um, show it again and that is because there was a lady I think it's a lady called Avril uh, contacted me through the YouTube channel to ask a question um, how do you fit the bed because she couldn't fit it on uh, and I'll show you why she couldn't fit it on. Um, 
and it's quite confusing actually is that's the bed that's the bed extended um it's a standard bed and you can extend it for larger items but i'll build it all up and then i'll show a video again of it built up but the problem she had is this and this is the hang on get this right other hand this is what goes under here that you tighten the bed with and slacken it and she couldn't get it to screw on because you've got to start that on the thread underneath the bed uh, basically for anybody else that might have this problem is and you don't realize is you press that and when you press that it, it releases it so you can turn that it's very finicky to get started the washer goes on before it and then you start it going and you have to keep cranking it and pressing the button pulling it back press the button to get uh, release the button turn it to tighten it some more press the button to release it back it off and keep going until eventually it's nipped up and ideally you want it in a position about there undone so that when you turn it to there the bed's locked or you know as far as it'll go you don't want to have to keep pressing button again there is a, a position where you can set that where it's set tight it won't move pull it back and it's slack i'm going to build bed up again and then show the um the video of it actually running and what i've done with it uh, and everything else okay i'll stop it for now right it's a little video just showing how awkward this bed is to get on um I've put a G clamp on here, or you might call it a sash clamp, and I've I gripped underneath there because that is the thread under there, and it's loose. And every time you put try and put the bolt, the uh, adjuster on it, it goes back in as the bolt. So you need two hands. Um, I'll get it started and I'll show you. Yeah, so I've managed to get it started, which. Where is it? I've lost it. There. That's the unit. And it's on the thread. Uh, and then you turn it. And then press the button. And pull that down. And wind it back. Not letting the barrel of the unit turn. And turn it again. And you have to keep doing that. Uh, unless you've got two hands spare, I'm doing this with one hand until it nips up. And you keep doing that, I'll show it again when it's nipped up. Right, so I've wound it on some more. See how awkward it is. So you need to keep nipping it up, press the button, pull this back without letting the barrel turn, wind it again, and just keep doing that. Very awkward. You'd be better, I suppose, with it laid on its side. Right, it's starting to tighten up now, so that's loose. And that's it. So that's tight. So that's it. And if you want to tilt the bed, just undo it. And you can alter the angle wherever you want the bed. The angle finder there. Okay, so I'm going to nip it in that fully up position. Right, the other thing was I was going to show you, which he was on the other video, was that it was a, a good size motor 550 watt for 20 minutes. I suppose it, it gets warmed up. There must be a thermistor in there that. Cuts the power down to what 420. Very powerful. I won't be using it for more than a 20 minutes at a time on a cutting sheet and stuff. But yeah, very good. So good size motor. I don't know whether that's for putting extra tubes on or cooling or what. I don't know, but there's got like three different sizes. No idea. But I've connected my back in to that bit under there. So, right, so the bed's on, and it's um, extendable. Quite 
quite good. Locks in the position so you can't move it. There's a bolt to go in here. Um, nut and bolt. Which I've put somewhere. I'll find it. Uh, and that stops the bed twisting. That's just to lock it once you've got the um, bed on. There's a little plastic that goes in there. I've seen people make new ones of those. Then you've got various things that go on, of course. You've got your, your fence that fits on. So adjust backwards and forwards. You go right up to the blade. Lock down, quite sturdy. Uh, another nice little thing that the supply with it is this. Mighty gauge. Which I thought were a nice finishing touch because I don't know I always get them with them. Um, you adjust it to the size of the slides in the guide. So, great for any angle cutting. You can also adjust the depth of this beam through. So if you want to come back here, you push that through further for, to, to support the timber. If you were cutting some big stuff, I don't know. I've not used it yet, but it's there. It's quite an handy thing to have. So, yeah, it's got a little guide roller on it as well. Seems quite good. What else can I tell you about it? I've set the guides, as I said, so that the bearings are not tight on it, but they are giving it a good support. I've got it through so the teeth are just sticking through past the bearings, so it's not going to damage the teeth with the side rollers. There's obviously the adjustment for the up and down, which you slacken the, the red knob, and then you can come right down to your work. I'll take a right to the top. We did measure that. It was, I think it was quite good actually, depth. We're at 125 mil throw on it, which we thought were good because a lot of them are only 80. I'm sort of down here. Uh, and the other good thing about it was it's got a right good depth from here to here, which I think we measured that at 245 millimeters. So quite good. Um, is it quiet? No, it's a bit noisy, but it's good. Uh, it was £158. Free delivery from Aldi, which the same make apparently as a Shepesh do one with that big motor. I think it's £230 some pounds, and there's other makes, great for professional and stuff, do them that you're up into 300s. I think foot money it was excellent and I've cut some pretty thin stuff I mean have a look at that I cut that other day I wasn't trying that hard I measured that with micrometers uh, real thin yeah pretty parallel don't seem to run out but I think a lot of this run out what people complain about is because they haven't got the side rollers set and they haven't got enough tension maybe on the belt. There's, a, there's probably a number of things why people run out. I mean, obviously, you only want to be set for your depth of cut, whatever you're cutting. If you're using this and you're close up, you can only come so far because that hits that if you went. So you're probably looking at two and a half inch, uh, what, 75 mil. A bit deepest you could go if you was using it close up. If you're not and you were doing freehand, you could bring it right down to thickness of your plywood or whatever that you're profiling. I'm sure you won't get any uh, any uh, bend on your blade, but I have not had any run out on this, it's been really good, so I hope it's helped anybody that's looking at buying one. Um, I think the next thing I'll be looking at is my bit drill, because I bought that as well. So I'll do a little review on pillar drill. Anyway, thank you for watching. Anything garage, look for more stuff.